welcome back everybody last video I put out uh, we were talking about neck tension on, uh, on these Creedmoor brass that we were trying to load and um, the tension using our new little tool here with a meter on it kind of opened up a rabbit's hole and I fell down in that hole pretty good most of the problem I had was trying to find information uh, on the internet mostly and uh, stick around and see if I can show you what happened. So using our uh, our little dial gauge here with our pressure indicator on there and using our expander dies on there I could I could get the next you know spread out uh, even using uh, a cutter We've got the Sinclair cutters for turning the outsides of the necks to to get them even and it's really hard to, to measure the actual thickness of these necks you actually need a, a little tool like this where you can get on the necks and, and measure them properly and I was still getting a little bit of a run out which I really thought I shouldn't have because I just turned the necks um, and we even using you know our, our Hornaday neck, neck cutting tool on these things and running an expander down there and I could look down inside the, the necks of the brass and I could see that the expanders were actually hitting in various different places on there so so the insides weren't very true so we decided well what if we were to ream the insides and that's kind of where the, the rabbit hole really came into play was trying to figure out the best way to run these run the reamer down down on the insides now there's several different companies that make these things but we were having uh, concerns and, and issues with how, how they were trying to, trying to operate that. And I wasn't able to find a lot of video information on the internet on reaming the insides and necks. Yeah, there's a fellow out there that makes a, a little lathe, lathe thing, uh, IDOD or ODID thing that, that actually cuts the insides and the outsides at the same time. That looked pretty trick. And, you know, the brass was being held straight, so it come in there nice and straight but the little suckers are kind of expensive um, Foster also makes one they use these little cutters that go on the end of their their case trimmer a little reamer like that you probably can't see it very well it's got a little bit of a taper on the end there where it starts up starts to go in the necks and then you know you just cut you know turn it and cut it from there but on the, the Foster type is kind of like this this Hornaday type you're actually holding the brass you know from the back back of the brass and uh, you know depending on how that's holding or how well shaped your brass is back there it's kind of doing one of these little wobbling numbers and that's definitely not a good thing so I wanted something that would that would hold this brass a little bit better and uh, lo and behold Ellie Wilson makes a nice little trimmer that uh, holds that brass rather nicely. Then you have to get these little shell holders that will hold uh, hold that brass. And of course, they've got one for new Creedmoor brass or used or sized or fired Creedmoor brass that fits in there properly. But at least the case holder, once you figure out which case holder you need to get, holds holds that brass pretty good. I mean it's you know it's not moving around. The tool that is actually a, a trimmer, it's a, the trimmer tool, it's got a cutting blade on there for, for trimming the necks, which are also held in their square. Um, they also make these little reamers, which we've got one for both the six and the six five. 
you go in place of the cutter and you pull your cutter out and you put your reamer in there and of course you just lock the the brass down you can go in there and you can ream out the inside of your necks you know as perfect as you can the problem I ran into is you can't take something like this and just start with whatever size this neck is it has to be sized to something you know so I'm, I'm not dealing with something that's a lot smaller than what I'm trying to ream I don't want to cut that much out I just want to kind of clean the inside and there wasn't any real specific information out there on what size this needed to be you know until we started buying buying these tools and you know trying to read the paperwork on there and it was still kind of still kind of vague so that led me to 21st century to buy more mandrels and now I've got all these mandrels and I'm trying to guess which size I might need but I was able to trial and error these things together to find out you know all right well that was just a hair bit too big so now I can come back down to a size that's smaller and these mandrels I actually got in uh, half ten thousandths increments so I can actually get where, where I needed to to just be able to cut a little bit out of the insides of the necks not that I'm removing a whole lot of uh, brass from the material you know I still want I still want some thickness left when I'm done so between the the inside and the outside uh, now I'm able to get a, a lot closer more repeatable tension on these necks but it was it was a chore trying to trying to figure that out I knew I definitely didn't want to go with this thing or the or the foster one so we ended up going with uh, Ellie Wilson here and got their their setup because I really I really like the way those uh, those mandrels and the case holders come in there and hold hold this stuff together if I put it in there right and basically you can just kind of take it and tap it a little bit so it's snug and then this thing locks down in there and you can adjust your your depth that you really need to just to make sure you get in there and that one's actually the uh, a six millimeter brass and these little cutters uh, of course it's got like a knurled hand thing on it to turn them by hand but that's fine with me because I didn't want to turn these things hard I didn't want to get forceful with them so you can actually just insert that in there where your cutter was and go in there and just remove what you need to and of course they're, they're a little snug on that so you gotta kinda tap them to get them out and then then I'll go through the process of figuring out you know the sizing and stuff and, and remandling but I had to, I had to get these things mandrelled out to a spot where they would fit on my reamer correctly before I could even you know get them get them cut out right so now I've got the insides of these things reamed I've got the outsides uh, cut so I've got more of a consistent thickness on this brass and now it shows up with a little better results with my um, with my Canadian press here. I still running into some some inconsistencies with this with this press, but but, I, but when I come down on it, I'll try to drop some little inserts in here. I mean, it's it's smooth. I can tell it's it's pretty even and smooth, but I'm still running into some differences in the actual tension on there, and I believe that is the. Uh, the temper the annealing of the actual brass itself so now that we've got brass that's you know proper uniformed thickness and uh, we'll get these things all fire formed up real good and I can anneal them properly and I'm actually at the point where I'm getting getting some better results with this but it just uh, you know I ended up buying stuff that you know I probably didn't need or I'll probably end up buying more stuff but um, this little tool was was the savior on that, and I actually I actually kind of like the way this thing was made. Nice tool. But at least with all these uh, expanders that I have now, uh, I can get 
pretty close to the tension I want to on these necks. Um, I have noticed uh, the spring back on this brass might be more than what you're actually thinking. If you're using uh, some calipers to measure, all right, say I've got a loaded round in there and I can measure, you know, the whole loaded round and I know how thick my brass is, I say, okay, well, there's, you know, two thousandths difference, so I've got two thousandths of tension on my necks. Well, maybe not. We were actually, uh, running through some of this stuff when we first got this thing and we could actually take the appropriate size bullet and stuff it in there in this case a six millimeter stuff a six millimeter bullet in there realize okay that was still too hard didn't like it pulled the bullet out and still couldn't get one of our smaller mandrels in there so I know I needed to start with a 243 mandrel for sure because I just had a 243 stuffed in there and it still wasn't light enough for me so we did end up getting a 243 5 and uh, also got the well I got the 243 as well but ended up getting a 244 mandrel just to put in there which is actually bigger than than that six millimeter bullet and run that mandrel in there and now we're actually starting to get get lighter proper tensions we did the same thing with 6.5 Creedmoor I went out from it we started with 264 264 5 and 265 you know just to try to get you know get that lighter lighter tension on our necks and having the options to do that you know if I did step beyond there like whoa that's way too light we actually got to the point where I was only getting like 10 pounds of pressure so I was able to back up that extra little bit to get get the proper tension on there but uh, at least at least they're smooth going through loading some of these things now where I can see all right that one was 30 that one was 40 that one was 40 that one was 60 that one was 30 that one was 40 I can kind of call call my stuff around a little bit I can simply just put it in the box you know those were 40s those were 30s and that's a that's a high one I'll use it for for a cider or for for a fowler but uh that's probably like I said that's probably the tempering tempering in the necks I'll get a little better program on that and uh you know make sure that I'm you know trying to get more consistent on there but uh this adventure has been kind of kind of wild. Like I said, I couldn't find the information I wanted to. I'll try to drop something in the in the explanation box down there of all the the different things that that we had tried to go through here through this video. But hopefully this will help somebody out if you're if you're trying to go down this road, you know, to get more precise with your with your loads. Uh, maybe hopefully this will help you out. And as always, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.